John, thank you so much for joining us uh, from Canada, which is very exciting indeed. Um, could you share some of the lessons that you think can be drawn from other countries such as Canada who have gone through this um, merger already? Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Laura, for this opportunity and good evening, everyone. Um, it is a peculiar situation to be uh, talking to you uh, from uh, from beautiful downtown Halliburton, and everyone can Google beautiful downtown Halliburton, you'll know where I am in, in Ontario. Um, our, our, my, uh, my message is uh, pretty short and simple, don't do it. Um, and I, I go at it from two, st uh, two um, focus points. One, <clears throat> a private member's bill that I passed in, or I got royal assent for in 2008. And uh, second of all, uh, the merger in 2013, which um, basically made CETA, which was our defate, uh, sink without a trace. So uh, first of all, um, when we started the private member's bill back in 2006, 2007, there was study after study after study that said Canada's aid was unfocused, it was poorly distributed, it was ineffective, it was a waste of money. And by the way, it wasn't that much money anyways, because uh, we, uh, we, we talk a good game in Canada, we actually don't put our, our money up. Uh, so we're, on, we're at 0 0.3 and we're hovering. Um, and, uh, and of course, Great Britain is the gold standard in, in actual aid um, distribution, but also the, the, the quantum, relatively speaking. So um, the aid um, uh, focus was changing like flavor of the month. Uh, there was uh, there was little uh, coordination. You would change from minister to minister, and and it seemed like uh, we went through a lot of ministers. Uh, they would go from government to government, and of course, in two thousand and in uh, five, we had a uh, liberal government, and then we had a conservative minority government, and then we had another conservative minority government, then we had a conservative liberal uh, conservative majority government, and now we've and then we got a, a liberal majority government, and now we're into a liberal minority government. So we like governments, um, and we have over the last uh, <laughs> quite a number of years, and every one of them has a different focus on what um, is going to be the uh, distribution profile of the aid. So passed this bill and the bill went, it was very simple. It first of all said that aid was for poor people. I know that's a, a, a strange concept, but you know, that is the point. Uh, the aid is for poor people. And the second point of the bill was you had to actually ask the poor people what it is they wanted with, uh, done with the money, not what somebody in Ottawa thought should be done with the money or wherever uh, particular capital you, uh, you live in. Thirdly, it had to be consistent with international uh, human rights standards. So those were the three points of the bill. And the final point uh, was that six months after the fiscal year end, uh, the government had to do a, um, a uh, accounting, shall we say, for how they distributed that money. So the people that fought this bill the most were actually the civil servants. You know, God forbid that um, that uh, the, the uh, discretion of civil servants should be fettered. My goodness, what a what a concept! So, um, uh, and then of course, as because the uh, ministers and the governments turn over quite quite frequently, um, there's been. Um, a, uh, how should we say the, the minister's position has been a junior position for quite a while. Uh, I had the bizarre experience of telling one of my own, i.e. the liberal minister, what was actually in the bill that was um, that governed her mandate. She had no idea, absolutely no idea. So, um, uh, so I guess that's point number one, which is um, uh, uh, that um, I don't know. I don't know whether Britain has a legislative mandate for how the money is to be distributed. The second point is uh, on the merger, and um, so ours happened in 2018. Or sorry, 2013. Um, all of the um, platitudes that have uh, uh, that you can think of are actually recited. I was looking at the. Um, the uh, speeches that the ministers were given and I had a couple of extractions here. Um, and this is. Uh, in, on March 21st, uh, 2013, which by the way was my birthday, um, they said that uh, the linkages between our foreign policy development and trade objectives continue to grow as opportunity to leverage uh, each of these grows at equal pace. Well, if your goal of aid is actually helping poor people, well, that may actually not fit into your foreign policy or trade objectives, and maybe even it, it's contrary to. So, um, and then the next quote is that it's going to increase Canada's economic opportunities. 
And then the next quote is, we are gonna enhance the alignment and we are gonna maximize the effectiveness. All of the bureaucrats speak, uh, all of which uh, is a wonderful covering uh, for let's just merge trade, our foreign policy and our aid and, uh, and uh, make it quote unquote aligned. Um, and if it happens to dribble down to poor people, well, that's a bonus.